Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is my first video of 2023. Um, I took a little bit of it. It's late January 2023. I've taken a little bit of a break after all of the videos that I produced in December. Um, but we're back now with our first project of the year. And this is actually going to be a series because this is going to turn into, I think, a pretty big project. So it's a little bit different than things I've done before, but it's also quite similar in some ways. But we'll dig into anyway why it's a bit different. Um, yeah, so let's start off anyway with this machine that's in front of you, which is, this is a prototype. Um, and it's basically what this whole project is going to be centered around. So if you have followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I have this mild obsession with balancing robots and uh, that kind of thing. Um, so this is another balancing robot uh, type machine. And this one is a, a ball and beam machine. And again, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've built one of these before, um, a different version of it, which was actually uh, me, which was the, this is the third iteration of one of those machines I've made. First one I made way back when I was in college. More recently, I kind of rebuilt a, a better working version of that. And now I've made yet another version, which is a completely different design, a whole totally new design for me. I'm hoping this will be better than all of them so far. So you might think that's basically the same as everything I've done. It's just, you know, a little bit of a different design. But where it's different is this machine. I'm hoping that if I can simplify the design and simplify all the parts and get it like really simple and effective, then I'm going to actually try and turn it into a kit that people can either download all the parts for, make themselves, and I'll produce a, a manual about how it works and some educational content around it. Maybe in the future you might be able to buy the whole kit yourself and just assemble it without having to print it, but uh, this is largely all for 3D printed parts, so hopefully people will be able to also just download everything digitally and be able to make these themselves and you know experiment with it, play with it and learn from it, which I think would be really, really cool. So that's, I think, what's going to be the biggest part of this is trying to make everything super basic and really simple and out of really um, readily available components so that people will be able to do this themselves. So digging in. First off, we have our new little machine. Um, so it's pretty simple. There is a single servo on this end, a little uh, linkage, all 3D printed, a beam that it runs across, and then a little uh, ultrasonic distance sensor, and of course a fulcrum at the end for it all to pivot around. So as the servo turns, we can change the angle of the beam, and that will move the position of the ball along its length. Uh, right now it's just screwed onto a random piece of plywood that I had, but for the kit, I, well, I mean a piece of wood is probably just fine. Might come up with some, maybe some laser cut part or something that is a little bit nicer that the whole thing can mount onto, but yeah, this is the bones of the whole thing. So I might jump into some CAD now and show you some more details about the design and some considerations I had around it. Um, but so far I'm pretty happy with this prototype and um, kind of the next step that I have to do is I have to make have to uh, wire it all up and um, get all the electronics working and then also get the uh, PID controller working to hold the position of the ball. I should also say that I didn't actually mention what this does. The idea is that a ping pong ball sits on it and by the servo moving um, it'll tip the beam's angle with the position sensor it can detect the position of the ball and then it should be able to balance it at a set point. So uh, you, you might choose to balance it right in the middle, so then this arm will move up and down to adjust the angle of the beam and then balance the ball in the center. And then if you were to flick the ball, it should be able to rebalance it back to the center. So yeah, that's about it. Let's go have a look more in depth at the design and then we'll have a look at some of the electronics and the control for it. Okay, let's have a little bit more of an in-depth look on the uh, CAD model for this uh, new machine that I designed. Um, so first off, actually, um, I want to say I've moved to using Fusion 360. So I was previously using FreeCAD for everything, um, which was great. Uh, I learned a lot using FreeCAD, but I wanted some of the more advanced features and flexibility that uh, Fusion 360 has. So I'm currently using the free, not for commercial use uh, version of it here uh, for this project. Um, I have used this a long time ago, but <laughs> the only problem was I did some tutorials on it and then 
when I ran up against something in a real life model that I wasn't sure how to do, I just uh, default to going back to FreeCAD because I already knew how to do most of the things there. So I've committed this year that I'm going for all in on Fusion 360 as my CAD software. So this is kind of the first uh, models that I'm actually going to, that I'm playing around with. And I already absolutely adore it for how easy it was for me to work out these linkages in it. I just think that is, <laughs> that. Oh, that's a bit dodgy, but I think this just feels like magic to me to be able to prototype and have hinging linkages work as quick and easy as they do in this is absolutely fantastic. Whereas in, in FreeCAD, uh, this was not nearly as easy to set up. So yeah, really like it for that. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is our main models. Um, I've added, there's a few extra bits in here that aren't really necessary. So I have the base modeled in here, which was just to give me a, a solid platform not really essential, might use in the future to maybe if I was to laser cut out a piece of wood, I might use that as the template for it. Um, I also modeled my servo in here just to get my clearances right, but obviously we could take that out. So that just leaves us here with our uh, 3D printed parts, uh, of which there are five. So there's the servo mount piece here, where it's very, very simple, a little bracket has a base with screw holes to mount it down to something, and then a little um, gap in here, which perfectly fits uh, the RC servo and some little uh, relief holes here where you can put in self-tapping screws. Um, aside from that, we have the main fulcrum piece here at the back, which again, quite simple. Um, it's just, yeah, basically just a vertical column with a little uh, clevis on the end of it and some uh, little support ribs as well, because in my experience, tall pieces like this when 3D printed can snap quite easily off their bases and um, with minimal effort. So this is just to help reinforce that a little bit. Um, you will notice for the assembly of this, I did it quite basically with the joints. So I basically selected uh, these pieces here uh, on the insides there as well and made them hard up against each other. So you'll notice that there's no clearance here where in actual fact there's a millimeter of clearance either side of the clevis here um for this piece to slot into for washers and such so you can make that uh, joint a little so it has a little bit of slop in it a little bit of clearance um aside from that other parts then yeah the main beam is pretty simple it's just kind of like a v channel sort of um extruded down along it a little stopper at the end to stop the ball falling off the end um obviously it has little brackets on either end to be pinned for the joints of it. And then it also has this uh, funky little uh, hole pattern here, which perfectly fits one of those uh, uh, ultrasonic position sensors as well. Um, so that can just slot straight in. It should be a fairly tight fit. You can actually, it'll probably just stay there on its own. Um, other than that, I think the other, the fixing method I'll recommend for people is, you know, maybe a tiny dollop of hot glue or even just an elastic band probably crossed around it will hold it in place. But I think it should just slip in and hold on its own with the clearances that I have built into it. Um, the last part then, these little linkage arms. Um, so the little linkage arms were quite a bit of fun to design. Um, so one end here just is meant to be just a press fit onto the splined end of the servo. So when you take it, the screw in the middle that the little servo arms are on, there's usually a little, it's a little splined, um, shaft that comes out of it, a short, you know, it's kind of very stubby little short spline shaft. So that is meant to be a press fit onto this. The idea being that you will press it into the plastic. There's a little chamfer on there to help you with that. And then you can put the screw back in that came out. You'll probably just need to use a small washer uh, on the end of it so that it uh, makes sure that it, uh, it captures this. But I think without the screw, the little compression fit should be tight enough to just to hold it on its own. There's not a huge amount of load on it either. Um, so yeah, that's the lower linkage arm. And then there's the upper linkage arm here, which again is a very small little piece, just a through hole here. And then a small clevis on this end with another through hole built into it. Um, and yeah, that's it. The whole thing is designed to be held together with, uh, there's three bolts. So there's, it's all M5 hardware. So there's a longer M5 uh, screw that goes through there. And then a, sl a slightly shorter M5 screw here. And then a slightly shorter again, M5 screw here. Of course you could use the same length screws for everything. Just make sure that you don't use ones that are too long that will then foul on the servo and everything here. So yeah, I'm using, I think a 16 mil one here, a 20 mil one here, and I think it's either a 25 or 30 mil one at the end here. So three M5 screws, that's basically it. Standard hardware that comes with the servo to hold that in place and a couple of wood screws or self tappers um, to screw your servo in. And then 
same idea here these are marked out for clearance for some small wood screws to fit in which is how i mounted it onto my little plywood base um for the prototype that's it uh, it's pretty simple i think it's a pretty straightforward design um, i'm hoping it works well um this i have some concerns about the the joint angles here um so also the joint angles that are here in this mocked up model are a little different to what's on my one because if you move this base piece closer or further away you can actually change the position of these joints which gives you more or less travel and um, the angle around this uh, fulcrum so if i turn my joints on you can actually see the angles that these joints are at so if i go square on and then you can see that i don't have a huge amount of range of motion here before i start fouling so it's kind of easier to see it if i flip around to here so obviously the model will let me just go through in the space but see this joint will start to foul around there so i don't actually have a huge amount of uh, range of motion uh, in here which i think might cause some issues there's only about two degrees down i can go and then if i went the same up that's not a huge range of motion so if you want the ball to accelerate faster one direction or the other you can rapidly increase the angle but i can increase it up the way a lot but i can only increase it down the way so much so that could be a bit of a problem um so i'll, I'll experiment with that see what happens i may have to change the lengths of these linkages and mess around with that geometry a little bit but I won't know until I test it if one if, if having one or two degrees of, of movement is enough, um, then it'll be fine. I can leave it like that. Otherwise, I'll probably have to redesign these linkages, but we'll wait and see. That's why I have the prototype built. Um, yeah, so that's about it for first draft of the mechanical design. Um, I'm really liking using Fusion for this, and I'm hopefully going to keep using it um, for more projects in the future. Uh, so yeah, next step, let's look at some electronics and see if we can get the PID controller working and see if we can get the prototype to balance the ball. That's all step one. <laughs> and then we go from there. And so for my entry in most annoying noises you've heard recently, I submit. Ooh, gotta love it. <laughs> But it moves. Love that. <laughs> it does move. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to test out the linkage and make sure that these little servos had enough grunt and they could move meh, quick enough. Uh, I'm not sure if that is really going to be fast enough. So these little servos might not really do the job, but we'll find out. Uh, next thing, I'm gonna wire in the um, the acoustic position sensor and then our PID controller and see what we can do. Okay, as you can see, our little rig is able to move our ball back and forth. Unfortunately, I found a bit of a problem with this. This is absolutely as fast as I can make this move, <laughs> which, as you can tell, is not fast enough. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, I think we may have to go back to the drawing board with this. Um, yeah, so this little servo, it doesn't seem like I can drive it any faster, which kind of makes sense. Um, given how you drive these, the way you have to give a pulse width to it, and then with that pulse width, it's able to figure out, you know, how fast it's supposed to move, and they are kind of limited in, in their performance. So, yeah, I think this is actually as fast as I can make it move. I'm going to keep trying to see if I can do anything else. I I think this might be a physical limitation of using one of these little guys. Um, and this is not fast enough, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm gonna play around a little bit more and see if I can figure it out. But if I can't, it looks like I'll probably have to go back to the drawing board um, and come up with a new drive. I have some stepper motors lying around, so I could whack the stepper motor in here, keep most of everything else the same. Um, but yeah, just have a stepper motor uh, on the end here. So I might try that, um, but yeah, let's uh, keep working, see what happens. Um, shame that this won't work because this would have been a very cheap uh, thing to throw into a kit, but anyway, well, let's, let's keep moving, see what happens. Okay, so after a little bit of tinkering, I have wired up the stepper motor that I have, and we've definitely got movement anyway, and it's moving a lot faster than 
the last version, it's kind of attempting to do its job here. Um, this is pretty jankily put together, so there's some, just some plumber's tape on here holding the linkages together, and it's not even mounted to anything, as you can see, so it's not exactly doing what I want, but what I'm getting from this, I've gotten enough information from this setup to tell me that I think this motor is going to be the way forward in terms of speed and how easily it's able to move the beam, how quickly it's responding to the changes. I haven't done really any tuning here to this at all, I just whacked in some really rough values to make it move around and it's moving no problem. So I think a little bit of PID tuning and I think this should be a way and I can tune the speeds and everything of the motor, this isn't running at its top speed either so I can tune that up and I think we're going to be on to a winner. So, yeah, this has not gone exactly as planned, but, you know, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I'm happier um, I'm happier with this setup. I think it's going to be better in general. There's a couple of things I determined with uh, this old servo that would mean that it, this kind of design was never going to work. I have seen people use this on these online to do this kind of machine before. And what I notice is their machines are much longer, so the beam is far longer, meaning that a smaller deflection of angle at the end will result in more of an impulse onto the ball moving. Now, I also notice that people use very long linkage arms and gearing off of this so that basically very small movements of the servo are actually needed to move the beam quite a lot, which wasn't the case. I was having to give this pretty um, large pulses um, to be able to get it to you know move the way I wanted it to, uh, which isn't ideal. Um, in contrast, the stepper, I can drive it much, much faster to get those kind of fine movements that I want, have a lot more granularity, and yeah, just a lot more power in general with it. So I think that's gonna be the way forward. Um, I do love these little servos, but yeah, unfortunately, not gonna work for this project. So gonna keep that for another project. Uh, so next steps on this, I need to redesign a few parts here. You may notice I have a, a little cable tie here. That's because I actually forgot that there's a dead band in this sensor and you can't have the ball sit right up against it. You actually need a little space. So I need to redesign a little part of this beam to give me a, a little stopper there as opposed to this, um, this uh, what's it called? <laughs> Use your word, Ian. Uh, this cable tie. Um, another thing actually with these uh, servos that causes problems um, because they have a little brain in them that controls their position, they can do some weird things sometimes. So one thing that they can have a tendency to do is um, when they're resetting, when you reset them or when you're reprogramming the Arduino, um, for some reason they can randomly decide that they want to spin through you know, nearly 180 degrees to get back to some bizarre position for no apparent reason. Unfortunately, with this linkage design and everything, I need to make sure that my actuator really only stays within that very small angle that it has to move through. Um, and what happened, this guy did that and actually snapped this entire base off the bottom. Um, I've super glued this back together for now. Um, so that's not great. Stepper is much more reliable. When you power them on, they're kind of just, they sit there at zero. They don't try and get to some position or anything like that. So that's better, these servos, because they do have a little brain inside them. A little bit harder to know what they're going to do sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of it for now. I think we're going to leave it here for this video. The next time, hopefully, you'll see an actual mount for this. Um, I need to fix up this linkage so that it has a little, um, uh, a little flat spot on it to interface with the shaft of the motor, and I also need to fix up the dead spot here. And this mount in general also needs to be. Uh, worked on a little bit so a lot of designs to do I'm gonna redesign probably a lot of these parts um, and then come back to it so hopefully next video you're gonna see my next iteration of this hopefully working and I will have tuned the PID controller so hopefully I get the whole thing working nice and smooth and um, but I'll be in the next one so thanks for watching guys and um, like subscribe share with your friends and yeah I'll see you in the next one